Hello and welcome to another special episode of NSC Finvis Season 6 powered by CNBC TV 18. I'm your host Gautam Srinivasan and well our journey towards educating people about financial planning and wealth creation continues. Our next pit stop is in Nami Mumbai. We are at the headquarters of India's largest diagnostics giant Thyrocare. So let's take a quick look shall we? Founded in 1996, Pyrocare Technologies is India's first and one of the most advanced totally automated laboratory, having a strong presence in more than 2,000 towns and cities in India as well as international locations. Over the last two decades, Pyrocare, a leader in preventive healthcare diagnosis, has made customer satisfaction its prime goal by using techniques which are superior in quality. Its labs can process over 600,000 samples and more than 2.5 lakh investigations on a daily basis. This week, NSC Finways is at Thyrocare Technologies in Mumbai to discuss with its employees the importance of insurance and also the benefits of investing in oneself for a healthy financial life ahead. Particularly if you see our organization, it's a very young organization. The mean age of the employees is only 25 years. And many of them are unmarried, maybe of them, uh, some of them are just married, you know. I think uh, this is the time uh, when their earnings are not very heavy, but this is the time when they have least liabilities as well. So this is the time when they need to be educated about uh, financial management well. What is debt, what is interest, what is savings, you know, uh, basically preparing uh, themselves for the future. The financial literacy is equivalent to literacy, literally in today's world, right? You cannot call yourself comprehensively literate if you don't understand economics, if you don't understand finance. Every decision that you make that involves money is a financial decision. And it's not possible to take a well-informed, good, informed decision if you don't know what money is all about. Financial literacy for me is like managing, it's an ability to manage the financial matters in an efficient manner. We should have a knowledge of making a proper and appropriate decision and when to invest where and at what particular time. Hailing from a healthcare sector, it's important to have a perspective of how to manage your money better. So everyone needs financial stability or investment input for a secured future. But it's unavailability of such kind of platforms which provides them lucidity on investment input to plan their finances as well. There are a lot of things that can be covered in financial literacy, right from how to invest money, how to save the money you're investing, how to grow the money. So people teach you how to earn money, but nobody has ever taught you how to save or grow the money that you have earned. Welcome to NSE Finvis Season 6 powered by CNBC TV 18. Continuing with the theme of this year of invest in yourself, your path to prosperity. We are at the Navi Mumbai headquarters of Thyrocare to discuss personal finance and wealth creation with the employees here. And of course to give us uh, their professional opinion on how to manage money we have with us two financial planning experts. Pankaj Matpal joins us and so does Gajendra Kothari. Thank you so much gentlemen for joining us and thank you to the audience also for, for joining us for this discussion. Uh, let's start with the basics when we talk about investing in yourself. Uh, what are some of the do's and don'ts of wealth protection in your opinion, Pankaj? See, most important is how to achieve your financial goals. That is the objective of investment. So starting should be from there only that uh, first thing, the protection of wealth means buying insurance. I'm not saying investment in insurance, <laughs> but buying insurance, whether health insurance, property insurance, life insurance, so that when you need money, for healthcare, when if something uh, need arises, that uh, your future income, which is taken care by insurance, and then setting up your financial goals and planning to invest for those goals. It's not that usually people start investing mm. without thinking anything and then realize or don't realize even whether they are on the right track or no. Mm. So importance is the contingency planning, your protection means buying insurance and planning for your future financial goals. So in continuing with that theme, how do you balance risk versus return? How do people get the understanding of how much risk they can take and also be comfortable with the returns which keep changing year after year? Some years you have good years, some years you have bad years. One thing we should all try and understand is that risks and returns go together. Of course, 
you know, some people in this room may be very aggressive risk takers, some won't. I'll give you a classic example. When we go to a theme park, amusement park, there are different kinds of rides. The ones which are completely vertical, the ones which are yo-yo. So many of us are comfortable taking those very uh, high volatile rides. Many of us are not comfortable. You know your structure better, you know your body better, you know your conditions better. Same thing happens in investing too. You should know yourself first before you know about the investments. All right, and extending the theme of wealth protection, a key part of that is of course, you know, having an emergency fund in place just to take care of you know, sudden expenses, sudden changes in major life events that happen. So what are some of the tips you would offer to the audience here to go about building a, a, an, an emergency fund which works for them? At that point of time, when you think about contingency, you think about something which may not give you very high return, but it should be available like your saving bank account. Similar to that, there are some other schemes also like we have flexible fixed deposit schemes, we have liquid fund or ultra short term funds in mutual funds. So which will not give you very high returns, which are not suitable for wealth creation. But these schemes are less riskier and very high liquidity these schemes have. We say ideally three to six months of your expenses should be parked in your some liquid assets. So whenever you need money, it should be available. And then think about your wealth creation. All right, and Gajendra, what would you say to someone who comes and says, okay, when, you, when I look at wealth protection, how about insurance as an investment? Yes. You know, technically you have ULIPs, which, which kind of, to a certain extent, I, I know what kind of returns I'm getting. And plus there is, uh, there is the issue of, you know, LTCG being applied to mutual funds. It's not there in ULIPs. How would you respond to a person? Yeah, so, you know, just uh, to answer this question, to build up on what Pankaj said, look, Life is full of ups and downs, you know. While we may plan for good things like retirement planning, child's education, house purchase, we all look forward to these goals. Life do throw its share of unpleasant shocks in the form of accident, okay, critical illness, fire. So these also come as a part of the package, right? And that's why you need adequate protection. That, that should be the first pillar of your personal finance. Once you have done, taken care of the protection side, which, uh, you know, Pankaj initially said, do you have all have life insurance? Like today you are the breadwinner in the family. Have you ever imagined if something were to happen to you, what will happen to your parents? If you're married, what will happen to your spouses if they're not working, housewives, children? Insurance is a pure protection. It doesn't mean investments. It's an expense. Every year you pay a certain premium and if that event happens, suppose if you're not there tomorrow, that money comes to your nominee, it can be one crore, two crore. When you buy a term plan, you can go for a high term insurance cover. That is purely for protection. And the same goes for health insurance. If you were to fall ill tomorrow or you meet with an accident, there may be expenses of two, five, 10 lakhs rupees, you don't know. So that time you don't want to be left, you know, in, in the open saying that I don't have money. So once you've taken this, then, you know, you need to build on your savings, start with contingency and then long term. Now, many people make a mistake when they go for insurance products where there is an element of savings or invest, uh, you know, uh, returns. Insurance products should only be for protection you should not mix the two. Don't buy policies like endowment policies or money back policies, ULIPs. So you need to understand the parameters very carefully and make sure that it suits your requirement. On that note, we'll take a short break. We've been discussing wealth protection as a key part of investing in yourself. When we return, we'll be talking more about the benefits of insurance, not as an investment, but as a way to secure your life and health. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Come back, you're watching NSC Finviz Season 6, powered by CNBC TV18. We're here to discuss financial planning and wealth creation with the employees of Thyrocare, and of course, with our two financial planning experts. Now, in the previous segment, we discussed more on the wealth protection uh, part of things when it comes to investing in yourself. In this segment, we'll focus on the core topic, which is ensuring to benefit yourself, especially when you look at medical and life. So, Coming to insurance, uh, Pankaj, what are the, what are, you know, how do you calculate the right amount of insurance cover that you need? What are some of the basics that folks here should know? One should have insurance and adequate cover. For health, you may have that health insurance provided by your employer as well, but it may or may not be sufficient. So you should think about it if the sum insured in your health insurance is not sufficient, you should think about top-up insurance. There are top-up policy. If you have five lakh cover, you buy a top-up cover, which will be active only when the five lakh mm. is already used. You have critical illness cover, 
if you feel that okay, three lakh, five lakh cover provided by the employer is sufficient for normal healthcare, but something big required. So in that case, you can think about critical illness cover, which takes care of the big expenses. Your life insurance, whenever you think about it, buy a term insurance with an adequate sum assured. So your life insurance cover should be adequate based on the expenses of family, based on your outstanding loan, based on the future goal for your family members. So buy term insurance for that. And as I said, for health cover, it is very, very important. You should have health insurance, maybe floater policy for family. You may have top up insurance plan. You may have critical illness, illness cover, or you should have personal accident uh, insurance plan. Okay, and Answer. in terms of uh, in, you know ignoring the individual cover when you look at medical insurance, because a lot of the professionals would think I anyhow have my employer provided you know health insurance. Why should I get an individual cover? Uh, what would you like to say? And of course, adding on to yes. the points. Yes, and to just to add, mention. you ask a question: How much cover is enough? Hmm. You know, so many of us get confused that how much cover is right for you. Uh, there's a thumb rule which goes very well. Uh, whatever is your annual income, that. Ideal cover is 20 times of your annual income. So if your annual income is 10 lakhs, you should at least have 2 crore of income. Maximum the company gives is around 30 times your annual income. And the least you should have is at least 10 times. As far as health insurance you mentioned, hmm. so though you know your employer would be providing you a, a insurance cover for you and your family, right? But we still say that you should go for a standby cover as well because not necessary you will stick to the same employer for a longer time. In that case, if you leave the employer, your insurance will also stop there. Okay, and whether the new employer insures you or not will be a question. So, and in the interim also there is a risk. So you should have a standby cover. More so when you are young, the insurance premium is very low. For a family floater of four people, you know, all you have to pay is around 10 to 12,000 per annum, which is, which, are, which I think is not too difficult for you to manage. All right, and term insurance versus some uh, new product which is, which is coming out from a lot of the uh, companies, which is home loan protection plan. What do you have to say about that? A lot of the folks would be wondering, should I go for term insurance or should I go for this home loan protection plan? What would you say to them? See, these days, hmm. these insurance companies, they are launching products, loan cover, and selling through bank bundled with loan. And if you see the premium, it is higher than your term insurance premium. So if you are going for loan cover policy, compare the premium with the term insurance. If it is lesser at your age, then only go for that. Otherwise, stick to term insurance policy. All right, let's uh, take in some questions from the audience again on the importance of uh, insurance. The first uh, member from the audience I'd, I'd like to call out is Dr. Sandhya Ayer, if you could get up. When we talk about medical and life insurance, I think the market is very overhyping on death benefits. So my question is, are we too focused on death benefits? So every two, three years, you should sit and review your entire insurance policies, not just health insurance, it's also your life insurance cover also. Because today, you know, life insurance's cover is given based on your income. So today, uh, one crore cover may be sufficient based on your income, but tomorrow as your income goes up, you can increase your insurance amount. Incidentally, in many health insurance policies, you have these uh, no claim bonuses, you know. So today, the company gives you eight lakhs, and if you have not availed any, uh, you know, uh, of this cover for the next two, three, four years, it, the amount doubles. It automatically becomes to reset to 15 or 16 lakhs. So, you know, look out for these policies. And the cost doesn't go up, incidentally. All right. I hope we have answered your Thank question. You. Thank you so much for asking. The next name I'll be calling out is Vinod Pal, if you could get up. My question is, uh, someone like me who has just started his career and earning much less than uh, others. So how uh, insurance will cover someone like me? The rule of insurance is very simple. The day you've started earning, you are eligible for a cover. Now you have to just ask yourself this question, uh, do you have dependents at this stage? So maybe you may not require life insurance today, but health insurance can be required at any point of time. You can start with a basic cover, like as it's three lakhs or maybe four lakhs, whatever. Keep gradually increasing as your income goes up, as your uh, you know aspirations goes up. All right, I hope you have answered your question. The third person I'll be calling out is Minakshi Patacharji, if I could request you to get up. I would like to roam two countries. Per annum. Okay, and how much money can you set aside uh, uh, for your goal and what's the time frame you're looking at? To, for now, to... it's uh, around 10,000 rupees. Okay. And uh, not more than five years. So around, let's say, Once. two to three lakhs at the end of end five of... years. First thing you have to keep in mind, inflation. If the cost is one lakh today, it will not be one lakh after five years. It will almost double. And uh, 10,000 rupees you want to invest, invest in equity. But when I say equity, don't go directly into shares, 
better you invest through equity oriented mutual fund schemes well on that note we'll take another short break uh, we discuss wealth protection and of course the benefits of insuring and uh, in the next segment the floor will be open to the employees here at thyrocare to ask anything they have on financial planning and wealth creation to our experts here and uh, to the viewers at home remember to keep updated with us at our website nsefinvis.com and our facebook and twitter handles at nsefinvis Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Welcome back, you're watching NSC Finvis Season 6, powered by CNBC TV 18. The floor is open to the employees here at Thyrocare to ask any questions they have on financial planning and wealth creation to our experts. So let's see a show of hands. Who wants to ask a question? All right. What would be the best way to uh, get returns from my uh, retirement benefits? All right. Thank you for your service. Uh, let's have uh, our guests answer that question. Pankaj, you'd like to take it? Key to success of your investment is asset allocation. If you have money available in lump sum, maintain proper asset allocation. So say 60-70% you invest in equity, 20-30% you invest in debt, and 10% around in gold. But debt and equity are the main things which you should have in your portfolio. So my suggestion that in debt portfolio you have these bonds, debentures or some bond funds, debt funds which are category of mutual funds. For equity, now either you can invest in directly in shares but for that you need to have good knowledge and access to research. Otherwise there are good quality mutual funds, invest in diversified equity mutual funds, schemes and that too in a staggered manner. All right. Uh, I hope we have answered your question. Thank you so much for asking. Let's uh, see a show of hands. Who has, wants to ask a question to our experts? Anyone in the back? As All right. Small finance banks you know, and microfinance bank hmm. giving throwaway coupons. Like they give you 10 and a half, 11, 11 and a half percent kind of uh, interest rate. First is, uh, are these banks safe to go to? Because they don't have a pedigree to rely on. Can this be a good alternate to your liquid funds or let's say debt mutual fund as a whole asset class? You know, you need to ask yourself that why this particular bank is giving a high rate of interest, right? Maybe they are in shortage of funds. So then the question of risk is also very much there. You know, you have credit rating agencies. There are AAA companies, there are B, triple B and there are D for default. So if the ratings are not very sound, okay, and they're not investment grade, you need to be very wary about them. You need to be concerned. Okay. Now, of course, the returns are higher, but imagine if someday the, you know, your principal doesn't come back, you lose the entire principal then. And unlike in fixed deposits, where you still have 1 lakh rupees as guarantee by the you know, uh, insurance corporation, here there's no guarantee. Secondly, you talked about mutual funds. Now, mutual funds also invest in these kind of papers, right? But there's a two key difference. One, there is a fund manager who does all the research. Secondly, even if they invest in these papers, in a basket, they would have 50 different companies, right? So though you may, may have invested 100 rupees in that fund, only two rupees goes into that particular company. So for some reason, if, even if that call goes wrong tomorrow by the fund manager, your loss is only restricted to two rupees. The remaining 98 will continue to do well. So yes, you may earn 9.5% or 10% in that single paper, and you may earn around 8 to 9% in that mutual fund. For that 1% extra return, is the entire risk worth it? of your capital. Mm -hmm. That's the question you need to ask. Now, even if the mutual funds decision go wrong, they can segregate that paper from the main portfolio. And so it's like that 2% of the portfolio is kept aside and 98% is absolutely healthy, you know? Mm -hmm. So you don't have to worry about major, you know, major part of your capital. Right. All right. 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 Okay. I hope sure, you have answered sure. your question. Thank you so much for asking. Last call for a question. The that gentleman too. at the back, let's see what, what question he has. I would like to know that how to invest to buy a home after five years. I'm looking for that. Mm -hmm. So how, where I can invest that? 10,000 rupees per month and um, uh, What's the price of the house you're looking at? As uh, you around that 40 lakhs. Economics in house doesn't work out. Most of the times we buy a house for emotional reasons, right? Our families push us, society we live in push us. I'm not against buying a house, but you should not buy a house immediately or in the next five, seven years because you're young. Now imagine the moment you buy a house, you lock in a good amount of your assets into that property, which at times is 18, 90% of your entire net worth. You take a loan also. Right? Now, today you will buy a house, let's say, which is closer to your workplace. Right? You will buy nearby. What if you change your job and, you know, your office is now 25 kilometers? You will not change your house. You will commute then. That's a lot of wastage of time and, you know, wastage of time and health also. You lose health. Secondly, what if you shift to Bangalore or other place? Then what happens? You'll have to give out your house on rentals. Again, you don't have control on the tenants and things. 
So these are all botherations. So my suggestion is that you should buy a house maybe 10, 15 years down the line when you're far more mature. Right now you're very young. You, you may not be mature enough to buy the right, the kind of house you're looking for. 10, 15 years down the line, you will have a larger corpus. Save for the house purchase right from now. Start an SIP for house purchase, but buy that 10, 15 years later. That is when you'll have a larger corpus and hence you'll have to take a lesser EMI. And we never take into, we always think that the jobs are forever. Right? What if you tomorrow lose your job, but the EMIs will still continue to go? And that creates a lot of pressure, you know, stress in our, within ourselves. So I think this is a better way. And when you live on rentals here, the rental yields are very low. You know, you pay hardly 3 4% in the rental yields. And you can earn much better from your investments, which can earn you, earn you 10 12% returns. So my suggestion is that wait for 10, 15 years. When you're in 45, you know, around 45, you become far more mature. You know which city you would like to settle in. You know which industry you would like to settle in which company, you know, and that time your decisions will be far more stable than right now. Well, on that note, we'll wrap up uh, this exchange of ideas we've had with the employees of Thyrocare and, of course, uh, our financial planning experts who joined us. Thank you so much, Pankaj. Thank you so much, Gajendra, for joining us. And, of course, uh, thank you to the viewers for tuning in. You can stay updated with us on our website at nsefinviz.com and, of course, our Twitter and Facebook handles at nsefinviz. Stay tuned. We'll be back with another episode next week. Thank you for watching. I have not been very much in touch with the financial background because of my uh, previous job. But uh, then uh, this event has uh, told me many other things that we often think that we know, but actually we don't. Uh, the event was very good. This is like the first time we are having a financial discussion event. And the event covered medical and life insurance, which is very important. Because a lot of people think we don't have family history. So why get a cover? This type of events we have to attend for the, as a, that who is a beginner, actually. No, that he can understand that we should invest money and where we should not invest.